Hey everybody, welcome to February 26, 2024, 6, 10 p.m. in my famously long vlogs. We have a bit of a different one today, but if you want to skip around and only see parts of this or some of it makes you uncomfortable, I understand. <clears throat> These can get really long, maybe you only like, care about parts of them. Or you just want to break it up over days, whatever you want to do. I do time code these. So if you see little gaps in that red play line down there, that's going to be different chapter stops. Or you can open up the description down there. You see a big old list of blue numbers. We'll tell you what everything is. Jump around to your heart's content. Now, that's said and done. Um, you have probably seen the title and the thumbnail. I have been through it. You know I've been having some trouble the last few weeks. But guess what? It's way better. So uh, we're going to go on that journey. I'm not cooking today because just too much has happened. So um, we are going to have my whole kind of surprise hospital journey as a major medical update. But guess what? At this point, medical updates ought to get a lot smaller and a lot easier. So we'll move on from there. Um, Mary and I watched uh, <laughs> WWE Elimination Chamber. So we give you our predictions and our reactions to that. I do make a cocktail. I've got a tiny, teeny, tiny unboxing. We have a micro-sized taste test. And uh, I'm going to review Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. So uh, still a pretty dang good vlog, I'd say. Plus, you're going to see all kinds of fun uh, production value at the hospital. So <laughs> I guess that's really all there is to say about this. So I'm going to come back in just a second. I'm going to start with talking and telling you the part of the medical day um, that I didn't film. Then you're going to see that I filmed a bunch of it. And then I'll give you kind of a wrap up on where we are with all of that. And then we can move on into the fun stuff. So uh, let's get to it. Let's vlog. Okay, so medical updates. So, okay. So again, long story short, let's just recap. Three weeks before last Friday, um, things got really bad. I started bleeding from the lower end. Uh, I'm trying to keep this as clean as I can, but it might get a little gross here and there, everybody. I'm not gonna show you anything gross. You don't gotta worry about that. Um, <laughs> but um, so I went to the ER and after hours of waiting, they very quickly just diagnosed it as hemorrhoids. Uh, which is like, okay, well, I thought it was gonna be something worse, but they gave me all these treatments. Um, I went home and for the next three weeks, had a miserable three weeks of treating it, having some good days, some bad days, and never really feel like it's improving. Not at all. And of course, when I came back, I got a big head cold. So it took me a little while to get with it. I had to set up a new primary care physician because I didn't really have one. So it took me a while to get my follow-up appointment. Um, that's why it was three weeks. <laughs> but I did eventually get that. And I had three weeks of just laying around, being miserable. And a couple, like the day before, a day or two before I was scheduled for my follow-up, it got real bad again. Um, so I was just bummed out and having, you know, I was trying to stay as positive as possible, but whatever. So I went to my practitioner and I told her what was up, what had happened, all of that. She seems very lovely. I was very happy with her. So I want to stay with her. And um, then she started planning all these things for me. It's like, okay, we're going to test your urine. We're going to test your blood. Okay, fine, fine, fine. We're going to do a prostate exam. I was like, oh, okay. Mm much earlier in my life than I wanted, but okay, I guess I'll do it. You know, and she's like, and then we'll get you scheduled for a colonoscopy. I'm like, oh, all right, fine, whatever. We got to do it all. And I was prepared for all that. Did the urine, did the blood, blah, blah, blah. And then she goes for the physical examination. And as soon as she looks at it, she's like, oh, oh no, 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 no. This is wrong. Um, you need, you're going to need to go back to the ER like now. And then she quickly caught her tone and she's like, I mean, you're fine. You're going to be okay, but this is not him, right? <laughs> So um, did not get the finger in the butt, did not get the colonoscopy. So there's that. But um, she's like, listen, it's an abscess. It's an abscess and it's like draining. And of course it's causing you all these problems. And like, it's a giant, like it feels like a walnut sized thing down there. And it was near my anus, which will come into play in a minute. So I was like, oh, well, okay. Well, all right, at least I'm getting a finger in my butt today. <laughs> um, Cause I've never had anything go in down there and I'm not really ever looking forward to that. The day will come, but um, you know, cause I'm gonna take care of myself. So, uh, so I went to the ER and uh, <laughs> you're gonna see how all that unfolds and then we'll come back and talk about it. I will just say, um, it, I wish, part of me wishes they had caught that this was an abscess that three weeks ago. I could have already been well healed uh, <laughs> and not gone through that three weeks of pain. But the three weeks of pain, it was a catalyst for some things. I had been wanting to do better in my life and change. And that really kickstarted it all. Like I really have been great about cutting my alcohol consumption in half, getting my uh, water intake much better, still failing occasionally. Um, not that my diet was terrible, but I am paying a little more attention to it and being a little better there and just having better bathroom habits in terms of getting in and getting out quick and not just hanging out in there. Um, so with all that said and done, we're going to pick up from where I go to the emergency room and then I'll come back and wrap it up. 
guess where I am? Again. Again. So I'll update you when I can talk more freely. I don't want to make my business everybody's business, but I had my uh, primary care follow-up. I really like the lady. I'll tell you more about all that in a minute, but it turns out they uh, got it wrong here three weeks ago. <laughs> and they probably could have fixed it three weeks ago. But here I am, might be staying overnight, but supposedly by tomorrow I should be feeling worlds better and healing very quickly. Like I said, I'll vlog a little more and tell you more about it when I'm a little more private. <laughs> oh, but I'm wearing, Mary got me a really sweet uh, gift yesterday to feel better, so wore it on a perfectly appropriate day. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's been about an hour. I am in a bed, in a hallway. They're out of rooms right now, it's fine. I got my IV in for antibiotics and we're gonna do a CT scan, a little freaky. And then we'll decide from there if uh, it's superficial and they can just bedside drain me or if we're gonna need to get some surgeons in and all that. And I guess if that's the case, I'm probably here overnight. I don't know. We'll find out, but at least I got off my feet. Dad's keeping me company, and Mary got home, so I need her to bring stuff, but we'll wait and see after the CT. So that's the update now. Um, they diagnosed me with hemorrhoids last time. They should have looked deeper. I have a, an abscess, and that has been causing me all my problems. All my leakage has been pus. If they had seen this three weeks ago, I would have been well healed by now. At least we're getting it dealt with now. It's just, this is going to be a horrible day for me. But by tomorrow, I should start feeling infinitely better. I might be able to sit by the end of the weekend. Okay, that's my update. Oh, look at my sexy new gown. I am in a room for a pre-examination before the CT scan. Fancy modern technology. Better living through drugs. <laughs> Not on anything yet. They did offer me painkillers or anything, but I'm fairly comfortable right now. Other than just the dread of all I'm about to go through, which hopefully isn't too bad. <sighs> we'll see. But at least we're getting it handled. And we put you away. <laughs> all right, another update. Hey, Daddy John, what you smoking? <laughs> uh, it is like 7.04 p.m. We uh, checked in about 4.33 p.m. So, you know, that's how it goes. But uh, I did get a physical examination, and it honestly looks like this is going to be the easier of the options. We probably don't need surgery surgery. So going to have to do the CT scan, waiting to get picked up for that. And then they're probably going to make a little hole, a little drainage, a little clean up. And then I should get sent home. That's best case scenario, and that's what they think is going to be the case. Things could still change. But let's hope. In the meantime, enjoy all this free production value. Ooh. <laughs> you make a cry face for the thumbnail. <laughs> all right. I'll update you when I have it. Man, I'm hungry. I'm so freaking hungry, though. <sighs> also, this is the most I've ever had my asshole touched in my life. <sighs> really awkward. <laughs> hey, I'm getting my money for it. That's fine. I may not be able to cook anything this week, so it's fine. <laughs> Um, okay, so we just did the CT scan. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. Uh, said they'll have the results immediately, but it'll take them 30, 45 minutes to sort through it. And then we'll find out, is do I need a simple dream? Just put me in a room, take half an hour maybe? Or do we need to get surgeons involved and then it's probably overnight, but either way, I should be out of here tonight or tomorrow and fixed. I have my problem fixed. <laughs> Let's hope I still have my balls when I get there. I'm not on any drugs, by the way. <laughs> um, I am getting hungry, but I'm going to bank on I'm getting out of here in an hour or two, and then I'm probably going to make some bad Taco Bell decisions or something. <laughs> Production value. Hey, what is it now? It's, uh, what time is it? 7.48 p.m. I'll check in again. All right, it's 
um, PM and uh, have decided that I am going to need some minor surgery. So I will be staying overnight. We're gonna talk to the medical team in a minute. Don't know if they're gonna do it tonight or like in the morning. <sighs> Yay, but at least it'll get fixed. Um, about to get some pain meds. I still haven't eaten anything. I've been up since noon. I barely ate yesterday too, so. <sighs> but it is what it is. That means I don't get to see the cats tonight. All right, my mayor's gonna bring me some overnight stuff here in a bit, so we're gonna wait and see how long it takes before we can talk to the surgeons, and then we'll go from there and I'll give you more update. All right, it's like a little after 10.30, still waiting to talk to the surgeons. I'm starving. I'm gonna run out of time to eat if they say I can. I'm giving to about 11 for Mary to swing by and bring a couple things I need and hopefully bring food, but if I don't know, I won't have her do that. But right now, I'm just trying to think of a snack she gets her in the bag in case I need it, so. <sighs> At least it's an adventure. Something new and unusual. Let me try not to film right up my nose. Morphine is barely doing anything. Again, I'll update, but I don't know. I just figured it's been so long I'd say something. It's like a quarter after midnight. We have a Mary <laughs> and a privacy screen because one of the surgeons finally saw me for like two seconds, made it hurt, and then said, I'm going to go check with my boss. Still don't know if I can eat anything. Mary brought me a peanut butter sandwich and some potato chips, though, in case I can. But honestly, if she doesn't know if I can eat, that gives me hope they might still be able to do the surgery tonight, and then I hope to get out tomorrow afternoon. But anyways, I just figured since we had a wild Mary, we should include her Hello. in all this production value. <laughs> <sighs> it kind of really hurts right now. She really, really that's aggravated it. Yeah, that's with morphine. <laughs> I don't think the morphine did much for me. Too much of a tolerance. <sighs> okay. Uh, funny mary decided to leave a few minutes early and she said i'm gonna leave because that way the second i leave they'll come over and oh my god they did <laughs> well the nurse came over and told me uh my dad just left it's uh it's 1 a.m um i have been admitted i don't know if i'm gonna get moved i may i may still be in a hallway who knows uh not gonna be able to do surgery probably until at least 6 a.m i haven't actually talked to the doctors but that's the best we can figure from the nurse um and I'm officially not able to eat or drink anything, so <sighs> at least they're gonna put me on an IV and keep me hydrated, some various meds and things like that. And uh, I guess I'm just gonna veg out with some YouTube and <sighs> try to get a little sleep. I mean, it's, you know, I wouldn't normally go to sleep until probably when they wanna wake me up. At least they'll knock me out with some anesthesia. And <sighs> Again, this is not life-threatening thing everything should go okay but anesthesia surgery there's always a small chance but we're gonna stay positive because the wiener king ain't going out like that there's so many more mouths that need my meat i hope those aren't my last words okay no for real um but we'll see where we go from here I may or may not vlog anything else tonight. You may not hear anything until after, I don't know. Okay, all right, sorry, I just got a message, so. All right, everybody, thanks, and I guess I w I'll be back. You be Beethoven. All right, it's 3.45 a.m. I finally got a private room. Ah, it's nice. It was nice to stand up. Couldn't really turn over down there. I should be able to hear uh, the TV, but I'm not gonna use it. It was nice to pee. It looks like I won't be having a surgery before probably, they're thinking maybe seven or 8 a.m. Still don't have time. There's a nice big couch over there for my pops if he wants to come take a nap and all that. Mary may be working from home in case I get discharged uh, tomorrow. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the uh, you know, we were talking about my pulmonologist is a family friend, giving me a referral to a proctologist when I thought it was that. Um, turns out uh, that lady is 
actually the head of my surgical team. So that's pretty awesome. Makes me feel more confident. Not that I was doubting. Uh, shouldn't have too much more weirdness to do. This bed is much more comfortable than a gurney. Still not the most comfortable, but it's nice to kind of be in my own with no noise and, you know, lights off. I can turn the TV off, but I'm just watching some YouTube and because it's still well before my normal bedtime, even my early bedtime, so. Plus they're gonna knock me out for the surgery, so you know, who needs to be that awake? Um, yeah, the no food, no drink thing sucks, but. <sighs> Standing up, man, I was about to call the nurse. I, I was sitting there debating, like, should I call, when I was in the hallway, should I call a nurse so I can get a little help getting up and maybe go pee? I just got stretched, but then I got hauled up here about the time I was about to and then stood up for a little while and I'm in a place where I can stand up and move now if I need to on my own. So I don't know if I can quite get to my other side laying because of the IV, but uh, getting closer. <sighs> okay, maybe I will drift off while I'm watching a little, I think I'm doing some Gunner TV right now, watching the Kid Nation or something, so. Of it, production value. <laughs> This is a nice damn room. I'm not gonna lie, for a hospital room, this is a nice damn room. Okay. Okay, back to relaxation. Huzzah! 12.39 on, is it still Friday? Yeah. Oh, it is Friday, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, apparently everything went well. I'm, I'm groggy, my throat is dried out. I'm actually sitting. Um, I probably should still mostly lay around today, but by tomorrow I could probably start actually sitting. I gotta take it easy for a few days. It's still gonna take a few weeks of, you know, like kind of draining and whatever, but yeah, around like eight. Well, actually I guess they gave me antibiotics in a drip around five or something. I made me itchy, so they had to give me some Benadryl. And then I guess I got wheeled down to pre-op about eight-ish. And, uh, you know, had various people come in to do all the uh, signing off on everything and explain. He put these compression cuffs on my legs that apparently people love or hate. I kind of dug them. Uh, it's kind of like having that uh, blood pressure cuff around your arm, except it doesn't quite squeeze as hard. Prevents blood clots. Yeah, it prevents blood clot. And it kind of alternates gentle squeezes, and it's kind of nice. Um, everybody was super nice and friendly, of course. And, uh, Apparently it went well. I just, uh, you know, I just, I zonked out as soon as they started giving me meds and, or the anesthesia and just woke up shivering and freezing, but we got that all worked out and now I'm headed home and uh, it's, uh, now we get some real food and drink a bunch of water because I'm very dried out, but the transition from sitting and standing is still a little rough, but I mean, I'm currently comfortably sitting and They've given me all kinds of pain medis medication options. Uh, they did. I did think to ask about, you know, drinking and said I should probably at least give it 24 hours. So I was like, okay, no, no, no margaritas tonight, but tomorrow. We'll uh, check out the sitting uh, arrangement when we go over the railroad tracks up here. Yeah, why did you take me through the railroad <laughs> Shit. Um, anyways, it's nice to be sitting up in a car Sorry, I'm just really dried out. <laughs> Idiot. They did not have the right of way. Oh yeah, good, nice, excellent, super bumpy road. Yeah, couldn't take me new circle, huh? <laughs> That's all right, okay. I ain't gonna bitch here. I, I've been a burden on everybody and now. Uh, yeah, here comes the railroad tracks. Actually, it's not so bad. Again, I'm so used to everything being a pain down there that it's weird that it's not. Still gonna have to take sits baths for like a week-ish, I think, I guess. It's mostly for pain and all that. Um, I'm still gonna have to put some gauze, but I don't have to like tuck it up in there anymore. It's more just like to, you know, put some, like tape some into my underwear or whatever so I don't end up draining through onto a light couch or something. Um, so that'll be nice. Uh, all my meds are now oral. <laughs> Don't have to be rubbing anything in my butt no more. <sighs> so, the most important thing, light at the end of the tunnel. 
and uh, I'm sure I'll give you more of an update later. I just kind of wanted to catch up. A lot happened, uh, you know, once I put away my phones and I couldn't do stuff, so. God, I'm so dried out. Because they put me under anesthesia and like flipped me over and, you know, put a breathing tube in and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I don't remember any of that. I'm just told that's what happened. <laughs> Slim chickens. Yeah, I know it's new. No, they're popular too, damn. Hmm. I have to look into that. All right, well, I will update you more a little bit later, but I just thought you would enjoy my uh, hospital thing. So, uh, you know, something different, something unique. And again, I like sharing this kind of stuff. A, to have my own document of it as kind of my own diary, but B, you know, maybe somebody out there maybe having something similar, a little afraid or whatever. It's like, yeah, don't be. You'll be, you'll be fine. It's 2024. Stuff doesn't tend to go awry as much as, you know, maybe it did 30, 40, 50 years ago. All right, but talking's drying me out, so I'll talk to you more later. Okay, it's 8.20 on Friday. I meant to update a little sooner. Um, you know, I uh, got that McDonald's. And I said, I don't care if this is the worst McDonald's ever, it's gonna be the best McDonald's I've had in forever. Uh, you know, don't normally eat a lot of fast food, but this was an exception day. So I mean, a nice double quarter pound with cheese and fries. And you know what? Might've been a little bit cold, but God dang, it was good. Um, and then after that, you know, drank a little water and whatever and uh, took a Tylenol. And uh, then I went and laid down about 2 p.m. Got myself around four hour nap. So, you know. That was really nice and it was comfortable and you know i could even lay on my back a bit which was nice so i got up at six uh had my juice with uh what i thought was gonna be stool softener but it's actually fiber and it's like flavored and it doesn't really want to uh dissolve well but luckily it was orange flavor so it goes with my orange juice it wasn't too bad um and coffee and i uh, ate a little fruit drank some water Try to use the bathroom, I'm a little bloaty. Some of that's from the surgery, some of that's from weeks of just kind of trying not to fart too much. I might let myself have a gas X. Uh, I did try going to the bathroom. Um, I don't know that I had a lot of success, but again, I hadn't eaten until today in 36 hours. I haven't had time to go through. So, um, but I did kind of, it did kind of clean out their dressings and you know, and all of that. And I took a took one of the sits baths and that came out really, really clean. Got everything pretty clean back there. Said I'll still have some leakage for a while. so. I don't have to go as crazy with uh, dressing changes and all that and how I was doing it before, but you know, still gonna have to deal with that for a bit, so that's fine. Um, Cause honestly, even just sitting on the toilet, infinitely uh, more comfortable than it's ever been. The sits bath, infinitely more, com and those were usually pretty comfortable, but this was way more comfortable. So uh, that's really cool. And now I just shaved. And I've got some loose uh, dressing down there right now, and I wonder if I've already sold a little bit, but that's okay, I got clean clothes. And I need to do a bunch of laundry to clean through my stuff again anyway, so I'm having to do towels a lot more often because I'm using a lot more towels between the baths and uh, keeping like one in my bed and one on my couch, you know, just in case stuff was leaking through. So looking forward to that being over. Uh, Med-wise, I'm pretty much right now on an alternating schedule of a Tylenol, and then four hours later, and I'd be proven four hours later, a Tylenol. Um, if it gets real bad, they did give me Oxycontin, and if it gets even worse, uh, some Valium. But ideally, I'll just not use those, because I'm not in a lot of pain. And even when there is pain, it's like pretty dull. So, uh, you know, again, compared to where I was, this is, I am fucking thrilled, man. <laughs> Um, so just got to keep at it and, uh, you know, I'll, uh, probably have a little snack later. Uh, once I'm done showering, Mary and I are going to catch up on WWE NXT and do, uh, SmackDown. So we're ready for our, uh, elimination chamber tomorrow. So we'll do our review, you know, our predictions and all of that in here. Uh, we're just going to watch it on delay. I've already muted a bunch of Twitter words. <laughs> uh, I'm debating. I may or may not do a trailer tonight just since I haven't had anything out. And uh, I really wanted to do uh, WWE 2K for this event, but I'm just gonna have to skip it. So, but maybe by next week, we'll actually be back to Throwdown Thursday or we'll skip one more week and then I should be good to be back on Throwdown Thursday. Um, I don't know when I'll get back to doing long form gameplays because I know I was gonna do a bunch of games this year. I will get back to doing that. Just don't know when. <laughs> 
Um, you know, and we can get back to kind of normal trailers, although I would like to change my background up because that has been one nice thing about the new trailer reacts is I like having a new background. So, and I've been wanting to redo my office anyway, so we'll get there eventually. It's just gonna take some time. <sighs> but yeah, man, everything. Physically, I feel better. Energy, I feel better. Spiritually, I feel better. Not that I was ever terribly down in the dumps. And you know me, I'm again, this is not an act. I mean, certainly I have my bad days, but they're pretty rare for me. And um, like everybody in the hospital, like all the nursing staff, I frequently commented on how much they appreciate my very positive and understanding attitude about everything. I'm like, well, you know, what am I gonna do? Gotta get this fixed. Being mad about it ain't gonna help nothing. So, <laughs> so that was really nice. Um, and great team, really took care of me this time. Um, everybody made me feel comfortable and calm. And even before anesthesia, they're like, now we can give you like a Valium or something if you're feeling anxious or anything. I'm like, no, I'm good. Although I will say once I actually got to the OR doors, I started feeling just a tiny bit anxious, but I was like, nah, it's fine. And then, you know, a few minutes later, I was gone to the world. <laughs> it was weird though, waking up. It almost did feel like I came back from death, you know, because I was just like, ice cold and shivering and they had me, my dad said he, I looked like a mummy because they had me just wrapped in warm blankets and all you could see was like this of me and um, so. But like I said, hopefully this, uh, if nothing else is interesting or entertaining or helps some other people feel be uh, better about, just just go do it, just, just go do it. Like fix yourself, you don't wanna be miserable if you don't have to. Now, that might be easier said than done. Um, you know, I've got pretty good insurance and uh, and I'm lucky that if I don't, I, it would hurt, but I can afford things um, to a point. <laughs> but, uh, but if you can, you know, go to a clinic, get, get help. So, all right, obviously I'll kind of update you more. I don't think there's going to be, there's not going to be any cooking in this vlog because I don't want to be stressed this week, but we'll get back on it next week. And maybe we'll just go ahead and do something real fun. And uh, I got to start getting excited for this Disney trip because... Now, granted, I may not be able to go as hard in March as I would hope, but I'll be able to get out there comfortably, walk around, eat, drink, see some shows, and probably ride some rides. Luckily, I'm not a roller coaster guy. <laughs> and uh, what, I got about a week and change before I need to start booking my May trip uh, events. So, and I really only have a plan for May 4th. <laughs> okay, we'll talk all about that in the future. So, thanks everybody. Thank you for enjoying me and thinking about me and thanks for all the sweet comments and everything and we will start getting back to normal here so yay modern medicine okay i think that will probably wrap up this whole hospital segment <laughs> uh but there's more vlog all right let's get a little more medical update we're on a saturday um woke up feeling pretty good didn't really have to change my dressings too much last night um, I did one time, but it's because I didn't have them really secured so some blood kind of got out of the <laughs> that i caught it before it made a mess um, still feeling really, really good today. Uh, we'll be sitting soon. Just, uh, got a follow-up call from my general practitioner and, uh, all looks good there. Blood work, all that kind of stuff. Everything came back normal. Uh, even like prostate levels are normal. So where I accidentally, because we thought this was something else, I accidentally booked a proctology exam in April. I can cancel that. I don't need to deal with any of that yet. So yay. Um, so it really is just a matter of, uh, you know, just... Work the meds, work the routine, and uh, I'd be able to sit in a day or so. I mean, technically I could sit now, I just don't wanna push it. And uh, you know, within a couple of weeks, I should be pretty done with all this mostly. I might still have a little bit of leakage here and there, but um, you know, for a few more weeks, but looks like everything's going well. So Mary's messing with me, she's, uh, what's the word? Kilroying me from the other side of the camera, so we're gonna talk wrestling. But there may be more medical before we get to that. I don't know, I'm giving you the full update. Woo! All right, so that was a journey. Um, I mean, it was an adventure. And again, I, I, you know me, I'm Mr. Positive. It was kind of cool that so many of the, the staff, um, and I may talk about this, so maybe I should shut it up, but where they appreciated my positive outlook about it all. I think there was one moment I got a little distraught because it was like, oh, I'm gonna have to stay overnight and have surgery. Uh, all right, it was like, and they're like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, you know, I just, I gotta process the information. I'll get over it in a few minutes. Um, you know, so all that happened. Everybody was lovely. That hotel, that room, hotel room, that private room they ended up getting me in. I'm like, that thing was massive. I was like in a suite or something. I was like, cut these in half and have more rooms for patients. Jesus. Um, but you know, and then the food thing was a pain in, pain in the butt and all that. 
But I am happy to report it's been, what, it is now Monday, and that all happened, you know, I got out of the hospital on Friday, and, uh, you know, had a great dinner and all that. Um, didn't really have much of a bowel movement for a couple of days, but that's back to normal, and you know what? It is not a problem at all. I mean, again, I'm going super quick, but like there's no discomfort or pain or anything happening there. So that's very lovely. Um, I had a big meal yesterday. The first couple of days, I didn't really want to sit because I just didn't want to chance it. I probably could have. Yesterday, I set a bunch. As you're going to see, I went out and sat down for dinner for a couple hours. Fine. Didn't really cause any problems. Sitting in the car, didn't cause any problems. Sat down at my dad's house and watched uh, Walking Dead, which was great and didn't cause any problems. Came home, sat on the basement couch with Mary for a while, didn't cause any problems. Sat up all night, even watched a movie upstairs. Didn't really cause any problems. Um, the one problem I have had is uh, there was one point during dinner when I coughed and I didn't get off my tuchus and that hurt because I kind of pulled on things. But you know, if I take the pressure off my tuchus when I cough, perfectly fine. And uh, then last night in bed, I was laying on my side and uh, <laughs> I laughed a little too hard at a video. And I was like, oh, oh, try not to laugh so hard which is tricky. Um, other interesting things, because again, I'm sharing all of it. I'm not ashamed or embarrassed by any of this. Life happens to people and you know, don't, don't get weird about it. Like it's probably gonna, I hope it doesn't, but it's probably gonna happen to all of you sometime if you, you know, if you live a long life. <laughs> um, but like um, they gave me these uh, mesh underwear, a few pair at the uh, hospital so I could like pack gauze in there. Cause already, without going too into detail about it, the difference in how I now deal with my dressing is like so much easier and I'm having to deal with it so much less because that was getting maddening how often I was having to go, um, you know, deal with like, you know, I would have to take my dressing off. I'd have to take a sits bath. I'd have to then kind of wipe out between the cheeks and then I had some meds I had to apply and then I'd have to prep some tape and put some gauze and tape it. And now it's like, you know what, you can just put some gauze in these underwears and just wear them. Now, I did accidentally try to go buy some more at the store last night, and uh, I didn't quite buy the right thing. I bought this sort of hybrid underwear slash sort of diaper, but you know what? I'm kind of just going with them. I'm wearing them backwards, and I'm still putting a little gauze in there, but I feel a lot more confident nothing's going to leak out beyond my um, undies into my beds or my couches or anything. And honestly, too, the leakage has gone way down, and discomfort and all that is incredibly rare. I am on an alternating Tylenol and uh, ibuprofen right now, had no need for the Oxycontin or Valium or any of that. Um, and, you know, high fiber, high fiber to make sure the pooping's going well. But yeah, so I mean, it's starting to feel good. I went out for a walk with Mary today. I am realizing I desperately need to get back on my step training because Disney's happening. Even if it feels like it feels right now, I could still pretty comfortably go do the Disney trip. But honestly, in the next few weeks, it should be fine. Now, the weirdest, grossest part about this, and we'll wrap up, is um, I have... I, it's not officially called flossing, but essentially they left this tiny kind of rubber circle tube thing that runs through the wound because, and I'm supposed to move it a little bit every day and I'm still having trouble getting comfortable with that or finding it, it's a little bit weird. The point is they wanna keep the wound kind of open for a couple of weeks so it just completely drains. Um, so when I have my follow-up <laughs> in about a week and a half, they should close that down. Then I'll get a full week of healing before I even need to go to Disney. But point being, I could probably, I couldn't, certain rides I probably couldn't handle right now, but I could certainly, you know, and be fine on the plane and the car rides and, and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So now I'm starting to panic about, oh, I really need to get back to planning and prepping and packing and all that. Cause that's like two and a half weeks away. <sighs> but anyways, the news is definitely don't be afraid to go to doctors. Don't, don't get too down in the dumps about it. It's going to be one of those things. It's like, just suck it up and deal with it and get it over with, uh, you know, and then try to avoid doing this stuff in the future. So my biggest thing is don't sit on the toilet forever. <laughs> uh, now granted, that's not necessarily how I got this. This is just one of those could happen to anybody random, you know, something in my system did not go right for a few days and I got some kind of infection. Cause that's really what they did was it was a very infected abscess. So the surgery cleared a lot of that out and drained a lot of that out. And, um, oh, and then also like I had official, it was a whole thing, but, but uh, we got it. And uh, as long as I, keep taking care of it for the next couple of weeks. I'm gonna start feeling greater and greater and I'm very, very happy. And uh, I appreciate that y'all, uh, you know, kind of going on this journey with me and hopefully I help somebody out there feel a little more comfortable about doing it all. But that said, let's, uh, let's try not to have to talk about this stuff too much anymore. <laughs> Pretty much, I think moving forward, medical updates will be like, it's good. 
everything's just getting better. Hopefully, knock on wood, if I do it right. All right, so thank you. I hope it wasn't too gross, but it is what it is. All right, uh, let's move on with some more fun. What's next? I think uh, wrestling. Yeah, all right, let's do it. Let's get to wrestling. <laughs> Stutter. No, I'm, I'm injured. I'm on the injury list. I can't wrestle. All right, so uh, these are going to be our Elimination Chamber predictions. Okay. First up, I told them we needed to do this last night before they actually started the thing because now we can't look at the title card to see if the fuck's actually going on. Yeah, I didn't think about that. So we think we know it's just like two matches and two Elimination Chambers. Uh, sorry if we missed something. Also, unfortunately, I muted a bunch of stuff on Twitter yesterday and somehow forgot to mute the WWE account. So I have had one match spoiled because it was one of those before I, before I could tell what I was reading, I read the spoiler. You know what I mean? So I was like, damn it. Um, so that's on the women's elimination match. Okay, so I'm thinking... But everything else, I don't know. So I can't really talk about the women's elimination match. But we'll get her thoughts. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to decide what order they're going to do things because lately <sighs> it's been like the big women's match, the, the other matches, then the big men's match. I think it's probably going to be the women's elimination, then the tag, then the women's championship, and then the men's. men's. You think it's that's that's my guess. That, that would probably be mine too. Um, so in the women's elimination, you got Becky, Bianca... Uh, uh, Liv, Liv uh, uh, Raquel, uh, uh, Naomi, Naomi. Oh yeah, Naomi. Naomi and Tiffy. And Tiffy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So I can't really say here because unfortunately I know the outcome. It should still be awesome though. I have a couple of different ways that I think this can go, and I think a lot of it may depend on who's winning the women's match hmm. uh, for the championship. That makes sense. I don't think it's going to change hands, but if it does, I think Raquel's going to win. Uh, I, know, but I know it's that's not how this is supposed to work, but right. This and is I'm how just I think. and I'm just trying to keep a neutral flight face, not to give anything. Uh, but I see it kind of coming down to Raquel and and, and Liv because they they've got the stronger stories right now in terms of. Don't look at me. I can't say anything. <laughs> so let me just talk to this wall over here. Uh, <laughs> well, it's almost like you're looking at me for confirmation. It's like, well, uh, <laughs> um. But uh, I'm kind of wanting to go with Raquel. It's, it's so okay. tempting to go with the, like the, the man or or or, or, uh, or the EST, but uh, I feel like those are too obvious mm. at the same time. Okay. So I wouldn't mind Tiffy got it because I kind of <laughs> Tiffy. She's a great bad guy. Yeah. But she's skilled as fuck in the ring, yeah, dude. Yeah. So she got the goods. Mm-hmm. I don't know. So okay. Uh, <laughs> so now let's go to where I can talk. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. There was a jacket in my foot, too. I would have been more dramatic. Um, um, so let's do, I guess, tag match. Uh, I Judgment Day is just going to cheat and hold it, man. <clears throat> I mean, I'd love to see the titles go away, but I, I don't think they're going to change much at Elimination Chamber. So, you know, that's... No. Although uh, Tyler and Pete are very fun to watch. but uh, And last night on uh, SmackDown with uh, Dom and JD, that was a really fun match, too. But um, I just don't see Judgment Day losing gold yet. I think there'll be a lot. I, I'm expecting a lot of title changes at WrestleMania. Yeah. So what do you think on that one? That's kind of my prediction. I think you're probably right. Uh, I see. If it was a different couple going into it against Judgment Day, there might be a possibility, but... The, the, they're, they're, it's not right. It's, yeah, the timing's not right. And they seem too new to be the ones that do yeah. the belt swing. Yeah. So I feel like maybe if it was a DIY or something or New Day. Yeah, maybe. Maybe New Day, but yeah. Okay, uh, Women's Championship, Naya and Ripley. I've got the same here. It's going to be a hell of a match. I, you know what, let's throw a fun prediction out there. Let's say uh, ooh, Rhea keeps it by disqualification because a lot of other Naya's enemies come out and, and start beating the shit out of Naya somehow. I don't know. Well, here's the thing. Most of the people who don't like Naya don't like Ripley either. Uh, that's true. So I, I can see it being much more of a let them fight mentality. And... That's true. Um... <laughs> Wait, which one's Godzilla? Which one's Kong? <laughs> let's just not go there. Sorry, I even said it. Um... Uh... But, uh, yeah, I think I think Ripley's gonna maintain. I think I it's think gonna be she's brutal. She might get injured though. Which Naya would... does injure people a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, and that uh, that's what I'm leaning more towards is that she wins, but just barely. Yeah, and it roughs her up enough that it provides uh, an, an opening for whoever does win the 
elimination chamber. Yeah. And but there will the be blood. Time, oh yes, here's, here's there will is, be blood. I feel like if Nia wins, then Raquel wins the women's elimination chamber mm. because she's going to be I, 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 the best suited. I think of maybe going up against Nia. Okay, I could see that perhaps. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then uh, we got the men's chamber. Uh, my arms are getting tired. I want to get this done, uh, and you know I need to do a little poop dance because I'm, I'm still having coffee. Uh, TMI. Uh, well, this whole vlog is TMI. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so who's the in the men's. men's chamber? We got Orton. We got uh, 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 KO, KO, Logan Paul, Logan Paul uh, uh, LA Knight, LA Knight uh, McIntyre, and, and Jacqueline Bray. And yeah, why am I blanking on his name now? I had it. That's what I was trying to remember Bronson, the whole time. Uh, no. Um, name, oh, God damn it. It'll come to me. The Street Profits and uh, Bobby call, Lashley. Bobby Lashley. Thank you. Or as we like to call him, Jacqueline Brady. Yeah, yeah. Uh, whew, I'd love LA Knight to take it. I don't think it'd be LA Knight. Well, who, they're going up against uh, whoever will be the champion, I guess. Seth. Seth uh, oh, that's right. Going up against Seth. Okay. They have been pushing McIntyre hard. Yeah. And I could see, out, honestly, out of that lot, McIntyre would be a good workhorse. Yeah. I didn't like his heel turn, but now that I like that he's becoming like a jerk-ass heel, it's working a little better. His smart assness is working for me. Yeah. Um, you know what? I think I'm actually going to pull for RKO. I, I would like to see that happen. I'd like to see him be a champ. He's fun to watch. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of guys in there I would would not be hurt to see. But like you said, kind of thinking about who would be interesting going up against Seth. Like, it could be an interesting heel turn for Logan to do it. Like, if Logan gets double belts or something. But I don't I don't foresee that necessarily. I don't know if they can pay Logan enough for... Th right. Well, they finally got him on, like, not just pay-per-views. So he's getting into it. And again, yeah. don't really care much for him as a person. But you got to give him credit as a wrestler. Yeah, he got skills. Yeah. And he's an excellent heel. So, you know, I like all that. I'd love to see KO because I love KO. But I don't see KO uh, doing it. Yeah, because Elimination Chamber, because we were trying to remember, and it's like, is it one where, where it's like last man standing, or if it's just whoever gets pinned? I think first? it's just the first pin. Yeah, whoever gets the first pin. Now, here's a, here's a wild prediction. Um, our truth drops in from the ceiling, thinking he's helping the Miz, and somehow wins. <laughs> Which one's the Miz? In the KO. Scenario? He thinks KO is the Miz sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's like, you suddenly the, uh, the Mission Impossible music starts yeah, blaring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did a little promo on Twitter where, like, because everybody was talking about being in Perth, Australia and all this. So he did a little thing. He's like, I'm here, man. I finally made it to Austria. Where is everybody? Austria? <laughs> yeah, that was the whole gag. It was really funny. He's like, should I just go home? <laughs> the arena's empty, man. <laughs> oh, we love our truth yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go with RKO. That's my prediction. All right. Who did you? I, I'm kind of thinking it might be. It's gonna be one of those things. It's I, I I'm leaning towards uh, McIntyre. I'm not sure if I want it to be McIntyre, but at the same time I can see it where it, it's gonna be maybe in another AJ situation where they have him lose just to make him turn that much more. Yeah, could be. But well, that's not a way. So are you are you choosing McIntyre? Or no? <laughs> I need to put my hand down, man. Yeah, I want to choose. It's not who I want to win, but I'm, that's who I'm leaning right. might get the win. Okay. Yeah, if we get our druthers, it'd be L.A. Knight, because love him. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we kind of forgot. There's like a, a match before um, before the actual show with uh, uh, Indy Hartwell, Candace Sky versus uh, Judge, uh, not Judgment Day, uh, Damage, Damage Control. control. Uh, um, so we're going to watch that first here in a second. So, oh, okay. Uh, I, I did. I Damage control. They're not giving up anything. They're not giving yeah. up titles in a pre-show match. Yeah, I, I feel like they haven't figured out what to do with uh, Indiana and yeah, Chase yet. Yeah, and Candace. But I figure maybe Bailey will come have something to say. Oh, probably. But I still don't think they'll lose. Because the Coast guy got jumped at. Yeah, supposedly. Now. By the way, I'm smelling suspicious uh, long con uh, betrayal coming from Dakota Sky. That's my prediction at WrestleMania that Bailey's going to have that match and Dakota's going to fully turn. She's going to be like, haha, my leg wasn't actually fucked up. And, and it's going to be sad, be full mm. betrayal. But it makes for an interesting story. Anyways, okay, now we're going to go put on the mat. <laughs> so, uh, actually, it didn't run nearly as long as I thought either. Um, it was definitely the winners we expected, but not as exciting an ending. Um, 
it's interesting it's in daylight and that's weird me out a little bit i'm so you saw the lighting <laughs> And that they have like actual just poles for the corners of the rings. They don't have like the big like boxes you can make the big sounds with. Oh. Uh, I'm sure that's to hook up the rest of the stage. But I mean, what we did see here was cool. It was some entertaining wrestling, but not that terribly dramatic. But again, it's like a pre-show match. So, you know, nothing major was really going to happen. Right. Um, and now the Kabuki Warriors are being escorted out. So I don't think we're going to have any run in action we got indy pretending that candace is really really hurt mm. although they are hanging on them is something gonna happen here uh, or are they just getting like a nice little cheer off well indy's from there did so. i see brandon davis just now i think i might have mm. and i see flag guy i might see green shirt guy or at least from a distance there's a guy in a green neon shirt mm-hmm Okay, so that's that. All right, yeah, next. That was, that was Howell getting her, her home country. Oh, right, that makes sense. All right, uh, moving on. Okay, obviously it's much later. There's been things going on. <clears throat> We're eating Indian food. We're choking on Indian food. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Why is that? I got to get a reaction. Um, I'll wait till she drinks. Um, wheat non's pretty interesting. Uh, so I knew Becky was the winner. Uh, my thoughts when I found that out were like, really? It just seems like the same old, same old. Like, I love Becky, but like we've been here before. I would have loved somebody else, like a Raquel or somebody to go through. I think she has more beef with both uh, Lady Naya and uh, Rhea. But yeah. what do you think, Mary? I feel like uh, Liv uh, did not seem like that. The way Becky did to Liv didn't warrant nah. being knocked out. <laughs> well, you know, she's tired, you know. <laughs> Apparently. But how do you feel about the winner? Oh, God, that was so weak. Sorry, they just replayed it again. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sitting here going like, I know Becky's the man. And this is like, this is her first time ever doing the elimination cage. Becky? It was for Becky? Yes. Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. They've, they've said it like a bajillion times. Could have sworn I've seen Becky win this before. Whatever. Okay. Well, anyways. She's have... been in cage matches <clears throat> before. Yeah. She hasn't been in elimination chamber. Well, at any rate, I'm going to eat. I'm going to go shower and put on a better shirt, and we'll finish watching this and continue our uh, reactions. Well, I could sit up. I tested it. I just don't think I should chance it yet, but it was comfortable. Anyways, um, the tag match was awesome. No uh, surprise there. Um, the uh, outcome was not great. Oh, is Finn actually hurt? Was that... His thumb injury, actual, actual? Oh, yeah, the ref's reaching for her gloves. Oh, shit. Oh, I think something real. Oh, I think he really broke his thumb. Oh. Oh. He's like, fuck, 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 fuck. Uh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh poor boy. Yeah, shit. Um, I don't really like that they won. I, I, I expected they won, but I really started to believe our other boys could win because that was an incredible match, but... Yeah, they're definitely as a, as a tag team. Yeah, and they had a really good shot there, especially because, again, the Judgment Day is a pretty dominant, and they're making Damien much more into, like, the monster nowadays, which works yeah. and makes them more intimidating. Um, but I started to believe our tiny boys would win so much that then I was disappointed when they didn't. <laughs> But um, at least maybe Finn broke his... Th no, I'm not actually happy about that. I, I guess if they had won by cheating, I would have been more... But then I would have also been rolling my eyes. Oh, yeah. No, I think it's real, and he's just playing with as much of it as he can now. He's trying to make it a moment. Ugh, was he trying to reset it? Oh. Okay. Anywho. Uh, yeah, we'll see what's next. Jesus. <laughs> so, uh... Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Drew uh, wins via someone cheating for him again. So I think that's where a story is going. Uh, that was pretty entertaining, though. That was brutal. Yeah. Especially the way McIntyre got his butt whooped all the way through the beginning. Yeah. Randy selling his back and Logan didn't. It wasn't quite as. I figured Logan would pull off something way more exciting. It was pretty cool, some things he did, but. Well, I like KO started the, the match. 
by or started Paul's portion of the match by basically trapping himself in Paul's pod with him and beating the crap out of him. That was really cool. Just followed up with uh, Bobby. Bobby spearing, spearing him through another pod. Yeah, that was some of the impressive bits. Yeah. Uh, it makes the AJ interference makes sense, but it's a bummer. I would I would like to see LA Knight go further. I think I saw them taking so long getting Bobby uh, Bobby out. I'm sitting here going like, wait a minute, who fucked up Logan Paul last year? Right. <laughs> Logan Paul fucked up last year. I thought maybe it'd be revenge. Right. And uh, and I was like, no, 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 it wasn't revenge on that. It was just AJ being an asshole. Right. <laughs> Got distracted. Ooh. Oh, from that camera angle. I thought she's about to jump on my butt. I was like, oh no. She's like, no, I hear mama talking. Yeah. Sorry, I just saw the cuteness happening. Uh, but now we're back to the real cuteness. Uh, yeah, so I mean, again, it was a good time. I enjoyed it. I thought he was about to say, oh, awesome, like the Miz. Uh, Logan's testicles must be even more damaged because of holding the brass knucks down there. So he's getting brass knucked to his balls every time. Oh. Uh, all the fireworks. Yeah. They had some really beautiful sunsets at Perth, by the way. Yeah. Um, anything else to say about the match? It was kind of a straightforward match, honestly. Yeah, it was good, it was, but... It was pretty brutal. Yeah. I like the guys climbing up on top of the, the, the pods as they uh, were coming in. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> Especially when they're kind of pretending to do the other person's bit, so... Oh, yeah. All right, so Drew versus Seth at WrestleMania, and uh, Roman versus uh, uh, Cody at WrestleMania. Oh, the Grayson Waller bit was surprising because they, you know, we had the whole Roman ask Grayson for a favor. Yeah. Didn't really see how any of that played out in this bit. Yeah, I don't really did either. But it was pretty funny because it was funny to watch Austin count his uh, abs out of boredom at one point and. Uh, and the way they turned, tricked him into doing the rock stuff, you know, more of it yeah. to turn on him. And then Grayson just like, nah, it's fine. It's y'all's problem. I'm, it's, I don't got a problem here. I do wonder if maybe Grayson was supposed to do something. Yeah, maybe it'll come back. And, 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 yeah. But like Austin got in the way because uh, Austin, Austin just kind of rushed in, grabbed the mic and. Yeah. And, and he just kind of said Grayson goes. Oh, yeah, because, like, what if now, like, R Tribal Chief gets mad, then Grayson s throws Austin under the bus, and then Tribal Chief's like, all right, well, then make it right. Now you got, like, go beat up your friend kind of deal, like a gang, you know, a mafia yeah. kind of thing would. Um, I mean, you know, according to the movies yeah. or whatever. But, uh, yeah, that could be a real interesting angle to throw in, so. By the way, did I show off that what I'm wearing? Let me... Oh, yeah. Tom and Nick Mysterio. Look at that. Three amigos, baby. Come on. I had to get that. I had to get that shirt. All right. Uh, so we still got the uh, ladies championship, Naya and, uh, and uh, Rhea. So that'll be pretty cool. Well, lately they've had their, their live events have been... I was laughing at your yawn. ...facing but. things badly in terms of the final event is not the most exciting event. That's true. Although I think Anaya and Rhea should be pretty pretty interesting. It should be pretty intense at, at the very least. Especially to see if and how Dom plays in or anything. Yeah. You know, will any of the other ladies show up pissed off? I don't know. But uh, we'll find out soon. One more match to go. It's like quarter till midnight now for us, so... Oh. It's almost like we watched this when we would see a normal pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. All right, more to go. <laughs> As expected. <laughs> He's been getting time time. Um, no way they were going to let Rhea lose in Australia. But uh, it was a brutal match. It was pretty, yes. pretty badass. That was one of the best uh, table announcer table crushes ever, with like popping out bits and everything. But yeah. what I noted was I'm more impressed that Nia could jump out of a rolling chair. Like, you know, how, have you ever tried standing on an office chair? Much less jumping off of one. Like, that was impressive. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah. So, <laughs> you know, nothing really stand out. Nothing spectacular, other than it was just brutality. Yeah. 
Mary loves uh, uh, Rhea's makeup. <laughs> no. I just... I don't know. I just haven't been digging her, her makeup on her big matches lately. That's just... That's good. Although it looks a little better now that it's messed up a bit. Yeah. A lot of it ended up on Naya's butt. Yeah. All right. Well, unless anything else happens, that's pretty much Elimination Chamber. It was good. Yeah. I wouldn't say it was great, but it was good. There was some good stuff in it. Yeah. Tag match was honestly probably the most entertaining because it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Especially with Finn's broken thumb. But tonight belongs... Do we know if he actually broke his thumb? I mean, I don't know if it's broken, broken, but it looked like... I mean, he definitely jacked it up. Yeah, I was just wondering, maybe... I guess you haven't unmuted everything. No, I can officially unmute everything now. Uh, hopefully next time I'll remember to mute WWE's channel. <laughs> I that muted the I, I muted the word. I just didn't think to mute their account because I muted the game account, and I didn't oh. think about muting the WWE account. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't think anything else special is going to happen if it does. will pop back. But otherwise, that's our thoughts on Elimination Chamber 2024. Uh, awesome fireworks. Yeah. By uh, WrestleMania, I should be actually sitting on my booty. Actually, tomorrow I'm going to try sitting on my booty in a restaurant, and we'll see how it goes. So, Just trying to take it easy, because, I mean, yeah. as far as the hospital is concerned, like, I could have come home and started sitting if I could find it comfortable, but, and I definitely found it comfortable. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to be extra cautious and take it easy. And... Uh, she's, she's with her family. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Kind of got to break the uh, illusion for a minute. <laughs> I think somebody who wasn't in the family tried to get over there and jump into the shot, and somebody in the back row of the family pushed the guy away. Yeah. Rude. I also saw flag guy. All right. All right. That's that. All right. We'll see y'all later. Bye. Look at who's sitting comfortably in a restaurant. This guy. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, so we're to Zur. Uh, of course, we're gonna have something good. We got some new bread and butter. Really excited for that. All three main chefs on deck. So we've been chatting with Jeremy and Otter and popcorn. We're gonna have some tile fish. We're gonna have some white fish corn chowder. Uh, apparently, I'm gonna have some Mexican panna cotta. That's where I'm gonna have less of the soup. I wasn't gonna have dessert, but immediately they're like, "You have to have a dessert. It's Otter's dessert." He's also made a slightly milder hot sauce. He's about to bring me right now. So like, okay, if it's milder, I'll take a crack at it. But I ain't ready to do hot hot right now. Got some wine. Got the Daddy John. Oh, hi. <laughs> You're now in the vlog. Yes. <laughs> I saw it. Your permission slip. Oh, that's the permission. She said yes on camera. <laughs> All right, I'll be back. Okay, so we got a stra strawberry fire. Oh, strawberry fire. Strawberry fire. It smells amazing. Chipotle adobo. Dad's going first. Little dried hobby. Okay, little dried hobby. That's good. Mm. Oh, whoa. Yeah, the straw strawberry is awesome there. I don't know that I've had strawberry in a hot sauce. That's really good. Just a heads up, I gave Nick store Zen a record of this. She's making mocktails out of it. Ooh. They're not open today, but they're open the rest of the week. Interesting. And you know, sushi always sounds good. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. Maybe I'll get a sit twice. <laughs> Thanks, brother. That is that's fantastic. Yeah, that is awesome. The strawberry in there makes it really interesting. Ooh, and that in a mocktail? Yeah. All right, I love it. All right, well, that's fantastic. And it's not super hot, so right. good. That's not, you know. Right. I mean, I'm probably okay eating hot. I've just been hesitant <laughs> until things go back to normal. All right, well, we're gonna enjoy that. We got some uh, whitefish corn chowder on the way. Oh, that bread's good, that butter's good, but this soup looks and smells phenomenal. Nice and chunky. Let's go. Glad I got a um, cup though, because it's going to be a little heavy, I think. Oh my god. Oh, that is so good. It's like the fish is like like melting in your mouth because it's almost like pulled pork style. Mm. Little potato. 
popcorn flavor is nice and blended through. Mm. Herbs are amazing. Mm. That is dope. That is, that is dope. Well, unfortunately I coughed a minute ago and I'm having, there was a really harsh period, but now I'm just having mild adjustments. But hey, look at this. This looks so good. And light. Let's try this tile fish. Oh, my butter. My butter's falling off. Just trying to give me a little piece. I'm gonna start with the potatoes. Mm. Mm. Fish is delicate and delightful. Potatoes are pretty awesome too. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, the parsley in there is nice. What about this lime coconut butter? Maybe get a little on the mashed potatoes. Oh, that's awesome. Try a little of the butter on the fish. Oh, fish is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. mm. That's really good. I'm gonna go enjoy it. <clears throat> well, first, your boy's having a proper margarita. Second, Mexican hot chocolate panna cotta. This is supposed to be phenomenal. As soon as I walked back to the kitchen when I got here, everybody's like, you must save room for dessert, and Otter made it. So, you know, it's been ages since we've had an Otter uh, creme brulee, because he hasn't made them in forever. But I wonder if this is his next big kick. Because if his panna cotta is even half as good as his creme brulees, this is gonna be something phenomenal. I'm liking these little crunchy things on here. It looks like maybe they dusted a hint of cayenne or something on there. Yeah, yeah. Maybe cinnamon. Cayenne on top, yeah. Ooh, creamy, fluffy. Oh my God. Yo. Oh, that is heaven. That is heaven. A little heat from that cayenne dusting, <laughs> but it is like a creamy uh, creme brulee in there just without the sugar crust. And the nice little chocolatey, cinnamony. <laughs> Mary doesn't need to know what she's missing. Although I think the cayenne might be too much for her, but I gotta dip the, we gotta do the little biscotti in there. A little bit of naughty biscotti. I had no intentions of getting dessert today. But god damn, I'm glad I did. Mm. I'm, I'm waiting to get dad, but he's busy posting his his food check-in. Mm. Oh, that is awesome. That is. All right, I'll just, I'll cut and I'll come back for him. We have to get this for pos posterity? Mm -hmm. huh? Did you even get any panna cotta or you just got mm -hmm. the cream? I got it. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Heaven. Oh man, that cinnamon and cayenne goes together so well. I'm telling you, dude, that is fucking incredible. Yeah. When you have some with the cookie. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, the little crispies on there. Beautiful little extra texture. Mm -hmm. 
I am. I can see why they were raving. Mm -hmm. That well, is awesome. Well, to me, I never thought about cinnamon and cayenne going together. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's Mexican hot chocolate. So, <laughs> so I'm a little more used to it, I guess. Okay. But uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, really super simple miniature unboxing. Now, uh, because I'm handheld, I just I pulled my mailing label off and I went ahead and pulled the tab, but I haven't opened this. So uh, something you may not know is whenever you book for a Disney World, I don't think they do this at Disneyland. I could be wrong. But in Disney World, whenever you book a resort hotel, one of the actual Disney hotels, they give you a, uh, a discount on a Magic Band. It's usually like 10 bucks off. And, uh, you know, they kind of give you some, you have access to some that aren't necessarily on Shop Disney, but also you get free engraving, which can be great, especially if you lose them or especially if you have partners that collect and you have some of the same ones and everything. So um, I had a few to choose from and I chose this one because uh, we'll get into it here in just a second. Uh, but I am collecting magic bands and I am still trying to figure out, I want to display them flat, kind of like they're displayed in the store boxes, but you know, where I can also pick them up and take them out and use them. So any ideas for that, I'd love to hear. Excuse my little butt pillow, but man, that thing is nice. All right, so let's reveal what I got and what it looks like. Okay, I didn't really look at it, but as soon as I opened it, I saw you could see my home address. So I pulled that out and closed it without looking. So, and you know what? I can probably get this in a little more light too, so let's do that. Okay, now let's reveal safely. And I do love it's such a plain thing, but on the inside, it looks so cool. But yeah, I had to get this angry Donald because it will remind me of Mary. I had it engraved with Eric 24, so I kind of remember the year. Uh, it reminded me of Mary playing um, uh, my, uh, uh, Magician? Mickey's Island. What the hell was the game called? That we Illusion Island, yeah. Um, so I do like that they always come in this packaging. Of course, there's slots for a couple more. We'll take it out. We'll look at it a little bit nicer. But of course, down here, you're going to get your little instruction booklet. You're gonna get your extra charger, which is nice. QR code for setting up and all that kind of stuff. And uh, let's take my boy out here. Excuse me, I know I'm gonna be a little off camera just to undo this. And then this way I can show you the cool, like I just like that it's Angry Donald. And I'm excited to go watch um, uh, Mickey's Philharmonic again. That is one of my favorite shows at Disney. <clears throat> It's a great way to sit down off your feet for a little while, get cool and out of the sun. It's just a fun show. And there's some really fun wind effects at times. But I like that it's angry, you know, mad Donald. So I thought, yeah, I gotta wear this. And like I said, yeah, I'm gonna have to keep cutting. I was gonna show you the engraving on the back, but then I also realized I'll show you the serial number. And I don't think it's a problem because I'll have it tied to my phone uh, before you see this, but better safe than sorry. Cause I know there are some, uh, not so cool people out there with problems that might wanna try and screw something up. So I'm not gonna show you the engraving, but on the back, it does say Eric 24. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited about it. It'll light up, it'll do cool things. I love my magic bands, but yeah, I'm talking about like, I want a way to display them on like a giant like poster board or like a poster frame like that, but where I can also open it up and like pop them out and take those with me. So, because every other display I find is like a watch display where it's like round like that, but I want to be able to see all the gorgeous art on the bands because I'm starting to get a really nice magic band collection. But anyways, there's a little quick unboxing. I thought you might appreciate it. I'm excited. I was waiting till closer and making sure I got to go on the vacation before I opened this one. I don't know what I'll pick for May. It'll probably be a Star Wars one because you know, I'm, I'm going to get one every time and I'm going to get one in the park every time because I like collecting things and I think these are really neat. And if I'm going to be going five, six times over the next year, I'm going to get a lot of use out of them. All right, let's do more stuff. All right, hey, look at this beautiful lady. Hi. Look at this healing man. Yay. Yeah. All right, we're going to do a miniature taste test. We don't really have a lot. We technically have three things. We're definitely going to do two. We'll see if I get to the third one, but I got to shoot it later because I'm not ready for it. We have one food and one drink. Start with this. Sure. All right. So Mary found. Well, my mom found. I mean, I'm not a huge peep guy, but I love Rice Krispie treats, so, which are basically marshmallow flavored. Now that I think about it, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking these are, are going to be subtle at best. Just like sort of a vanilla marshmallow. Probably. These are artificially flavored because I mean, how else would it be flavored? I suppose there's ten chicks in there. Yeah. Ten chicks, man. Ten chicks. You did a real good job cutting that. <laughs> God damn. 
I, I kept up as close as I could get and it was still mm -hmm. sealed. Well, it looks like it's actually, hold on. I, I'm, I'm trying okay. to do it neatly, hold on. Come on, hey, hey, hey. Yeah, this is Mary's little cheat. She gets to taste one of these. See, this is why she likes, she likes that I do junk food taste tests while she's on her Lent diet. The thing is, I can't eat the rest of them until afterwards, which kind of sucks, because they will get... Ah. Well, well, actually, I kind of like them sort of stale. But, okay, I was going to say, you shouldn't have said, uh, let's oh, have them. Just look at those eyes. Poop eyes. <laughs> They're just so... That was particularly cock eyes. The rest of them are not as bad. But... So... Since I'm handheld, I'm letting her do most of the handling here. So squishy and fresh. Squishy. Mmm. It smells good. Maybe these kind of taste like, or smell like Rice Krispies. They smell more like Rice Krispie treats than they, well, mmm. Mmm. You want to throw a it? No. You sure? Mm-hmm. Nah, let's hope you get a whole one. <laughs> you know what, that's pretty damn good. You know what, maybe I do want a whole one of those. Might as well, huh? <laughs> Listen, everything she did for me, I could eat a goddamn peep for her. <laughs> I get to try it. It's not bad, actually. It's pretty good. I mean, it tastes like the marshmallow in a Rice Krispies treat. Mm. Ah, ah, what the? Mm, I didn't even do anything. Maybe those coughs caught up to you. Mm, no. Yeah, it's all the, the flavor and stuff. We need sugar. Ow. That's weird. Sorry, what? Sorry, mm, I'm almost so, over it. All the flavoring is definitely in the sugar. Uh-huh. Which, not bad. Yeah. Yeah, I could eat those. I'm not a big peeps guy at all, but that's the first one I could be like, I could actually like, actually eat, eat those. Here, I'll set these up. Feel free to help yourself. Mm, I doubt it though. You need to eat, I wanna eat better things. <laughs> yeah, but I don't need it. I don't know what the fuck, why did I just, <clears throat> I guess every once in a while. Do we need to take a moment? <laughs> no, we only got one more thing to do and then I can go check that. I mean, I'm sure, you know, whatever. It's supposed to, but I don't know why it was painful. That was weird. Okay. But anyways, that's <laughs> that's the worst it gets. Is occasionally I'll have something like that. Usually it's because I cough while I'm sitting or I laugh too hard. Okay, so the other All right, thing. so the other thing. Spiced cock. Yeah. It doesn't scary. really tell you what the flavors are supposed to be. Yeah, well, raspberry spiced coke and other. Oh, see, I, I forgot about the raspberry. I forgot element, about the raspberry. But... <laughs> I didn't know about the raspberry when I suggested. I thought it was going to be a spiced coke. <laughs> yeah, whatever that meant. Like mm. spiced rum, maybe. Yeah. Which is why, depending on how this, whoo, smelled that raspberry before you even got the lid off. Mm. Ooh, yeah, it's very. Australia. No, I'll, I'll suck out of there. If I like this, this might be fun for a Cooper Libre, though. Okay. I will say that. All right. Damn, I hope it's not quite that. Yeah, it, but it, it is that. It's um, a very chemical raspberry. I, I was going to say, it's which I might like more. It's kind of that ice, icy kind of okay. flavor. Because he, he almost burps and that's my other flavored things. Certainly the smell, it doesn't, you don't taste that as much as you smell it. It definitely has an icy vibe. Mm-hmm. Like the blue raspberry? Yeah, a little bit. Like you mix a blue raspberry with a Coca-Cola? That's actually not bad. I don't know that I love it. I mean, I don't drink a lot of Coke, though, unless it's mixed with alcohol. I might make for an interesting room with Coke, though. Coke float. Well, I was going to do a Cuba Libre. The lime juice, yeah. that and some spice oh, okay. rum. Cuba Libre is a rum and coke with a lime. Yeah, but that's the lime is what makes it a Cuba Libre. Just saying. Uh, I like it. I mean, I, I wouldn't like go out of my way to be like, oh, I must have that. But I like it. It is, like you said, it's kind of got that icy vibe going on. So all things considered, that's pretty tasty. Now I'm thinking maybe I'll make a cocktail out of that later. I don't know. 
All right, well, I'm gonna taste test one more thing, but it's a little, it's an alcohol. So I'm gonna wait a little bit because I don't wanna start drinking at 7.30. <laughs> Used to not be a problem. Used to be starting at seven on average, but now it's like, ah, I can at least go like nine, 10. He's doing so good. Yeah, all by choice. Like no one said I needed to. The main reason I cut back on alcohol was because of hydration. Uh, you know, since that was like gonna affect using the bathroom, so. <laughs> But um, no one was ever, oh yeah, because even my liver and all that stuff is like perfectly fine now that everything's been tested. Which is amazing. Kind of is. Well, I started so late in life with all the real drinking. <laughs> so, you know. All right, well, we got one more, we'll come back. Okay, one last little taste test thing. Um, as you may know, lately I've gotten into tequila, particularly because of the Addictivo tequila, the Añejo, um, which I love. I'm still working through this giant bottle I got through Christmas. But <clears throat> when I was turned on to this tequila, my buddy Luis uh, mentioned an extra Añejo and it being harder to find. Well, guess what Total Wine had the other day? And it's, you know, it's a nice price upgrade, but they actually have the extra Añejo. So I'm gonna give that a go right now. Um, I already took the plastic off. I haven't poured any yet. We'll try this old spot here. Sorry, bear with me. See if my phone will actually sit here while I pour some. And we'll give it a go. It's got to be good. Do I like it more than the Añejo? I don't know. I hope not, because this is quite a. It's all. It's not quite double the cost, but it is a little bit pricey. I guess a, a bottle this size of the Añejo is about seventy-five, and this was like one fifteen. Ooh, smells good. We'll just do a little touch to start and see what we think. So, you know, it's got some good color. Hmm. Does smell pretty good. I don't know if it smells as good as the regular Añejo. It's a little less uh, potent. Hmm. I like it, but I think it might be a touch sweeter. I think I like. I think I do like the regular Añejo more. To be honest, I don't know that I'm getting a tremendous difference in the flavor profile. I kind of need to almost side by side them. I'm not going to, but. Yeah, this one's almost a bit sweeter and it's lacking a little bit of that almost butterscotch flavor for lack of a better description. Well, I'm glad I got it. I'm glad I got to try it. It's very drinkable, it's very tasty, but luckily I'm a fan, a bit more of a fan of the slightly cheaper iteration. <laughs> and so that'll go over well, but in the meantime, I'm gonna enjoy this because this is pretty tasty. And hell, maybe it grows on me. I don't know, we'll talk about it in the future, I'm sure. Okay, this is the last thing I had to film. So now I'm gonna go finish this vlog real quick and then hang out with Mary. Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. I wanted, I had tickets to the theater. I don't remember why I ended up canceling. I think something came up. I've wanted to watch this forever. Um, they did not do a 4K release physically, so I haven't bought it physically, but they had 4K and it went on sale for 10 bucks on Vudu. I will not call it Fandango at home. It is Vudu. Um, <laughs> um, so I grabbed that a little while ago and uh, then of course it went on the streaming for free and I still hadn't watched it. I was like, damn it. But last night, since I was sitting up, and I was like, you know what? I could focus on something. I'm, I'm gonna watch a movie. So I threw on Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. Now, if you remember my trailer reaction, um, I love Eli Roth. I got mad respect for him, but sometimes his films can be a little hit or miss. And sometimes, even something like Green Inferno, I've come to love a lot more, but I was a little underwhelmed the first time because I didn't think it was as brutal as I thought it should be, thinking he was making his own Cannibal Holocaust. Um, so when I saw the trailer for this, I was 50-50. It's like, it's probably gonna be fine. It feels more 90s slasher than 80s slasher, I was thinking, and, then I, and I made a big deal about, I think it's gonna come down to the gore and the kills, because it's a slasher film. The primary thing you want out of a slasher film is typically good gore and good kills, and does it know it's in a post-Terrifier 2 era. Happy to report, yes it does, and man, it was brutal and disgusting, and. There was definitely part of me, I had a moment where, again, I have been through some bodily trauma recently that I was like, should I really be watching this yet? Am I ready for this? Because 
There is some lovely, lovely, lovely effects of absolute gruesome carnage in here. And, um, but other than that, the rest of the movie I thought was really good too. Um, we had a good who done it. I feel like I kind of guessed who it was, but at the same time, I kept guessing all these other people. So I wasn't for sure until I was for sure. Although, uh, I need to see the movie again because I do feel like, hmm, I feel like there's a spot or two in there where there's a little bit of hand waving going on. Like, well, that person was doing this when that happened kind of deal. And it's like, hmm, um, the main characters are likable enough. You don't hate them. I wouldn't necessarily say they're super memorable, but I do care about them enough to go on that journey. And I didn't necessarily want to see them getting got. Now, some of the people deserved it. <laughs> I mean, not, not really. I don't really advocate for murder, but you know, uh, <laughs> but, uh, some of the characters, you know, were not the nicest of people and kind of, they got their comeuppance. The whole opening of this or the whole Black Friday angle is brilliant. And that was so well done. Honestly, though, I would like to have seen a little more carnage in there, but you know, I mean, that's just, I, I'm, 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 I'm being uh, greedy at that point, uh, but because I thought it was beautifully done and right into great credits and all of that. And, uh, you know, and then I liked the comedy of it, the cinematography. I mean, just everything about it. The pacing was great. The villain is fantastic, and especially in terms of modern, iconic, like slasher design, mask movement, way they did the kills, things like that. I really, really like that, and I hope we get a sequel, because this is one that I could be like, oh yeah, we finally have a proper Thanksgiving slasher character, and it's actually creepy, and that mask is so beautifully designed, it's kind of like those uh, C-3PO designs or whatever. You can put a lot of emotion into it, even though the mask never really changes. So I thought that was really great. Um, but yeah, some of the kills there are just really... I wouldn't say like funny, like they don't take me out of the movie kind of funny, but they're kind of like, oh God, oh, like you're kind of giggling and laughing about it, but at the same time, like wincing and cringing, like, oh, Jesus. Um, and it is definitely very, very bloody. But yeah, I had a great time. And again, he kind of knows. It's like, okay, uh, you know, old Corman rules, right? Like uh, basically monster dead movie over. You know, we just kind of get out of there and a great punk rock. I think it was the Misfits playing over the end credits. So that was really fun with some cool graphics. And then there was what I thought was a post credit scene, but it's really just more of an outtake. Um, so, <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, Thanksgiving, man. I had such a good time with this movie. And now hopefully tonight I'll start watching some other things too. And I got to get back on Horror Pack because they've been sending me a bunch more Horror Packs. And I was already a couple months behind on that. So where I have had practically a month of nothing but just binge watching junk YouTube. And that's not a knock at any of those YouTubes. I love them, but it's, it's like, you know, like watching junk TV or whatever. It's not super engaging narrative kind of things. I think I'm ready to start binging through some narrative stuff. Although I also want to watch a bunch more Disney movies, get in that Disney mood. <laughs> so, right, well, that's my thoughts on Eli Roth's Thanksgiving. What do y'all think? What are some of your favorite Eli Roth films? I mean, he, I like that he's taking swings for other things now, you know, because he is hitting some other genres. Uh, like, what, doesn't he have something coming up soon that's way out of his genre? Oh, Borderlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that'll be cool. Makes me more excited for that. All right, let me hear your thoughts. Love to talk to you about it. All right, thanks. Let's uh, let's uh, move on. Hey, uh, as I'm not even going to try to pretend I'm drunk. This is about to be my first drink in two and a half, three days, something like that. If he's going to make it interesting. Yeah, something I've been wanting to try for a while. This is not my favorite of the recipes I want to try, but we are going to try a margarita float. So, uh, of course, as appropriate, I know I keep using this one, but we have a pint glass, no butts, no glory. They do recommend doing the salted rim on this. I'm not going to It says that. salt or sugar, actually. Right. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm here to drink the dranky drink. Mary pointed out this is supposed to be a double. Uh, I thought it was a double. It's supposed to be two drinks, so I guess I'm going to half this for one, and then I'll just have Cuba Libre and something else later, whatever. Um, so it is, what is today? The 24th, uh, it is 9.19 p.m. I'm sitting here trying to get my watch out. Oh good, this is 100% agave tequila because it says 100% agave tequila and I'm like, I'm gonna use what tequila I have. All right, first things first, we're gonna put scoop? a scoop of ice cream into each glass. Now this recipe is already sus from the get-go. Oh yeah, you tell me. Because it was like, mix everything into a, or put everything into a shaker. Well, not the ice cream, but, but liquor, your, lime like, juice, and soda. And it's like, honey, only do this if you want your soda to be flat. Right here, heavy, heavy dose of the ice cream. And he's, he's going like, yeah, I'll just 
Yeah, as I as I realize this is for two people, it's like, yeah, I'm just going to treat it as a double. It's like um, the soda alone is going to fill up your pint glass. Which is also a problem. The other problem is some shrinkflation bullshit where I was like, oh, I've got these tiny sprites because I was mostly going to get them from mixers. And I was like, oh, I guess they're eight ounce cans. No, they're seven and a half ounce cans. <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> Anyways, all right, so we got a scoop of ice cream there. It's just okay. It's not the best. It's what we could get at the time. But it's what I had enough of when I thought I needed two scoops. Um, so we're not going to throw this into a shaker. We are going to build in here and stir. Uh, so we're going to scoop the ice cream. And we're going to take our tequila and our lime juice first. So I can give that a little bit of a stir. Now how much was what? So I'm cutting it in half. So it's like a shot of, a shot of that and uh, two tablespoons of lime juice, which also I was having trouble, man. I had to go through like three limes because the first two I had were big fat boys, but they barely had any juice in them. So I went to an average ugly boy and it was like, I got you, daddy. And I was like, thank you. Sorry, it's not helping that that was on that paper towel and I'm moving it. Oh, it's getting sticky in there and I can't. Hi, I'm a man. <laughs> but also, you know what? I probably should not try and strain too hard because of, you know, don't want to tear any butt stuff. Ah, what the? Flip it over. You're using the ah, other side. Am I? Still, Jesus. Oh, there we go. Fucking hell. Okay, before we close that again, we need to clean out the inside of that. I will let you do that. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. Pie in the sky. Hi, hi, hi. All right, one and a half. Might pour a tiny bit heavy. Just cause. Whoops. Whoops, that was an accident. And what I find interesting is that he's been going on about how he's been wanting a margarita for the last couple of days. Well, I had to go get surgery and it turned out that was National Margarita Day. And I'm like, of all fucking days. I joked with all the hospital staff too. It's like, uh, can we get you anything? I was like, yeah, margarita. They're like, I wish. I was like, what do you mean this, rest this hospital has no bar? Zero stars. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pour this in. So I can, oh wow. Interesting how it kind of carbonated with the uh, ice cream. <laughs> Now we want two tablespoons here, which is like an eighth of a thing. I'm gonna just get a tablespoon measure out. Oh no, I know what's confusing me. Okay. I thought this so thing. One ounce. Yeah, I thought that was cups for a second, and that's what was confusing the hell out of me. I know. <laughs> well, because over here it measures out cups and that, so that's why, you know, I was using that measurement that, when I was that, dealing that's with the lines. Cups, because it looks like it might be a cup. Well, no, remember that's like eighth a cup, quarter cup, third a cup, half a cup. That's what I was going by for the tablespoons because oh. it doesn't measure tablespoons. It measures milliliters. But it's only like a cup max. Yes, but that's why I was confused. Okay. That's all I'm getting at. That's why I was We've confused. We've been having fun communication issues tonight. <laughs> yeah. But we love each other. And you know what? I can mostly move around normally again, and it's lovely. I'm going to go ahead and get that a little bit of a mix up. Oh, that ice cream may have gotten too melty. Whew. Smells like lime juice and tequila. And you know what? I'm gonna undercut the sprite a little bit because why open an extra one? Let's just do it. Yeah, and I'm gonna I'm go gonna slow. Drink it. Yeah, and I'm gonna go slow to help it not overcarbonate on me. And it's fine if you're not, but do you mean you're not even gonna try it? Just out of curiosity. Oh, no, I'll try it. I'm just okay. not saying, like, don't open it, can't expect me to finish it off. Oh, oh, I got you. Well, I could probably use the carbonation right now. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna have to give that a stir. I think we're only like halfway through that can. That is. This didn't happen with our Coke float thingies. Well, we put, I think you put the ice cream in last on the Coke nope. float thingies. No? Nope. Or well, we started with the ice cream so the liquids would kind of help melt it. The carbon, I don't know, there's the Sprite and tequila combination is just uh, foaming a lot more because like the foam's to about here, if you can see the orange straw. Yeah. Dang it. Maybe that's why they wanted you to put it in a shaker. Maybe it was supposed to not be super carbonated. I'm getting impatient. I'm going to overflow this thing. I always forget how foamy a float gets. Well, they don't usually get this foamy. I think foamy. Foamy? <laughs> foamy. I think it is a, I think this has something to do with, because like I said, it was weird that the tequila hitting the vanilla ice cream caused a carbonation. I thought that was unusual. 
I mean, there's a lot of Sprite in there though, actually. I mean, there's a lot of liquid because I'm hitting the top of the ice cream about that deep. <laughs> trying to kill some of this so I can... Hi, Napoleon. You the captain now? <laughs> we pour a little more Sprite in. That's fine, Commissioner Napoleon. Oh. Hi, 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 hi. <gasps> hi, Napoleon. Are you the captain now? Oh, you got a box, make sure there's no address on there. <laughs> Not on this side. Oh, hi. Oh, you're just such a handsome little man, aren't you? Yeah. Hi. Oh, there's an Abby and a Jicky Jack. Hi. Abe, is that a phone for me to know I'm on? I'm not mama. <laughs> All right. Oh, my phone. Jiggy <laughs> check. Wanna come here? If it says I will take the phone. <laughs> Jack says I'm feeling camera shy. How are we doing? I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> Getting there. And it feels like this is about to there, though. Oh, Lordy. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. This was not something I would have predicted. Yeah, so, uh... Yeah, I guess we should have followed the recipe a little more closely. <laughs> the thing is, would it be anywhere near as foamy? Because, I mean, you want some carbonation in a float, right? Uh, depends. Depends on the kind of float you're making. I don't know about a margarita float. We've never done this. Not gonna have much solid ice cream done by the time we're, or solid ice cream left by the time we're done. Is that a good or a bad thing? Well, you usually wanna have some, you know, so it can kind of keep melting as you go. Otherwise you would just mix like a cream or something, you know, sweet and cream. <laughs> I'm trying to, if I find, if I kind of pull it away from the edges, it seems to help break it down a little bit faster. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know this was going to take this long. Hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. Oh, man, oh my God. So close. A little hard on that last pour. Good Lord. <laughs> oh, oh, you would stink. You would stink, Jack. Oh, Dean. Stink. I thought you were going to call it. Well, I'm going to get a little more in there. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> All right. Is well, I figured I'd give it that last stir and kind of fluff it up to look nice, and then we'll give it a shot, because at this point, there's, you know, that much okay. left in here. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Margarita float. Interesting. 
That's very Spock. Fascinating. <laughs> hmm. Now to me, I would think you'd want to use like a lemon sherbet or an orange sherbet. So you kind of create, you know, we may try this again after, but, um, you know, use the orange to kind of get that, uh, Cointreau or, you know, what's the, what's the, what normally called triple sec mm -hmm. flavor. There wasn't anything about triple sec in it that I missed, was it? Not that I no, not that one. So the vanilla is what's interesting in it. Um, otherwise it kind of tastes like a lime heavy decarbonated Sprite because all the carbonation went up into the foam. <laughs> hmm. It's drinkable. I can't say I love it, but it's drinkable. It does make me want to try again, but with an orange sherbet. You know, different balance of um. Although honestly, you know, maybe I'll just do a Seven Up orange sherbet and put some tequila in it, some lime juice next. Like my initial first hit my palate, I was like, mmm. But then after a minute, it's like, okay. I can taste the tequila. Yeah, I didn't really get too much of that in there. Yeah, this is gonna be all you. I mean, it's not bad, but. That's not what I want to spend calories on. That's totally understandable. Um, but what, what is it reminding you? I mean, I, I, what flavor are you getting? Because, like I said, I think it's just a really heavy lime Sprite. You, you don't quite get vanilla. It's kind of hidden in there. I think I am actually getting a creamy tequila. Creamy tequila? Now, that's my new punk band. <laughs> All right, well, you know what? I'm going to dump the rest of this in here and then we got the room. And, uh, you know, again, maybe if I had shaken it, maybe if I blah, 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 but that's what that is right now. And I've got about a tablespoon left of that. So maybe we'll film for next week because this is my first time drinking, so I'm letting myself have four drinks instead of three. I have cut my drinking in half uh, just to keep me accountable. Not like binging, but um, over like 12 hours every day, I would end up with like a bottle of wine and like a couple double vodkas on average. Um, since this, uh, I've been wanting to cut that down. A lot of that started in COVID because I had access, I had boredom, and I had no reason not to. Um, but I've been really good. Mary can attest, like I chose to. And I've been like, you know what? I don't need to drink as much. So I've cut my drinking pretty well in half. I am giving myself exception a little bit today to have a little bit extra because, you know, I was a good boy for like two and a half, three days. <laughs> and plus there's like so much cool stuff to watch wrestling wise and everything, so. But you know, I'll still have a splurge day here and there. Like Disney Park, you know, I gotta do a drinking around the drinking all day for the D3 and all that, but. Okay, anyways, you can try this at home. I would definitely recommend shaking it after all, get that carbonation out of there. But I, I can't recommend this one. <laughs> yeah, I'll drink it, it's drinkable, but nah dog. That's a no for me from the very famous bass player for Journey on Don't Stop Believing, Randy Jackson. <laughs> Did you know that? We learned this recently. Randy motherfucking Jackson has like played on some famous motherfucking songs. And the one we really found out was he played bass and was with Journey for a year um, on Don't Stop Believing. Is it Don't Stop Believing or yeah, is it? Uh, yeah, it was Don't Stop Believing. Are you sure it wasn't the one they did for, um, uh, they redid for Stranger Things? What's that other big hit? Uh, uh, someday love will yeah. find you. Yeah, that one. Are we sure it's not that one? No, it was Don't Stop Believing. Okay, well anyways, impressive as all hell. So that's a yes for me, dog. Separate ways is the other song. Okay, to, to Randy Jackson, that's a yes for me. To this drink, that's a no, dog. <laughs> Bye. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up for this vlog. I have a tiny bit more. We're going to shoot our taste testing, but I've got everything else done. So I want to get this processing so I can finish the edit tonight, not be rushed. And once I finish this, I can go eat. So thank you for joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed this vlog. I know it's a little different, but next week we will come back. We will cook something, hopefully something crazy. I know I was going to do wheat bread, but at this point it's like, nah, I want to do something, you know, one of those more wild Eric Butts creations. So hopefully we'll do that for next week. I'm starting to figure out what. But uh, thank you for joining me. And uh, thank you for those that just show me some love and support. And if you even just thought about it, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, um, I'm still taking the stairs a little easy just because I don't want to overdo things, but... Um, it's not really that big of a problem, <clears throat> but, uh, comment below. Let me know what you think about this vlog. You ever had similar experiences? Um, you know, <laughs> anything like that. Certainly if you want to talk about it, I'm glad to read it. I love hearing what y'all have to say. So you can comment below and let me know. Other than that, you can click the thumbs up button. Give me the good old thumb of encouragement as I do love to be encouraged. And of course, 
Let's see what we can do here. Remember, will this work? Hey, we, uh oh, wait, 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 whoops. Sorry, headphone users. We will get through this. We will get through this together. We like to say that together. You want to say it with me? We will get through this. We will get through this together. All right, check out my music. Anywhere you listen to music, look up Eric Butts, especially on the streaming sites. You can go to ericbutts.com for all that funky butts fun you're looking for. And of course, there's more with the links in the description below. So hit that funky button. I don't know. <laughs> uh, click the see more button to see more butts. That's what I say. Sorry, it's hot up here. I got to turn on the AC. We have the windows open. Did you notice? It's February. It's wild. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, I appreciate you. I'm going to get out of here. We're going to go live a more normal week as we prepare for crazy ass Disney vlogs incoming. Oh, yeah. All right. I love y'all. Thank y'all. I'll see you all later. Bye.